Hey, everybody, thanks for joining today. We're going to be talking about how to keep testing, even though you may have limited capital. Um, being presented today by Bruce. And myself, Chad Kallmeyer. Uh, so I have been here at the metal shop for about seven years. Um, I'm from the University of Cincinnati and my uh, mechanical engineering degree and work some in the structural dynamics research lab there. Um, that's how I found my way over here to the modal shop. Uh, so just fun little favorite things I've rented in the past is actually skis to kind of match whatever condition the mountain's given you that day. And then also vacation property, ski and ski out condos, always pretty fun compared to a hotel elsewhere. Um, this is a picture when I was young, when I near when I graduated the University of Cincinnati. Been here about 21 years. I lead the systems teams for both rental and recal services. Um, the things that I've rented in the past that I liked um, I, on a work trip, we rented a Dodge Challenger. It was perfect in Florida. Uh, we rented a yurt at a music festival in the desert. It was perfect. And a monkey. Um, they gave us a little diapered monkey as a from a library it was really weird but amazing and monkey made me realize i don't need a monkey in my life um about the modal shop we were founded about 30 years ago now this year a new building and i keep promising and i swear we finally did take video last week we'll do some video um walkthroughs of around the building and uh in the building for for the coming weeks. Um, model shop focuses on shakers and structural equipment, um, lab based dynamic metrology, field calibration and verification, as well as uh, rental and recal services. And that's kind of stuff that we're going to focus on today. Um, so let's just get at it. I'm going to start with a question. And a lot of this presentation isn't going to be maybe the most thrilling stuff you're seeing. It's kind of a, an idea or, you know, we we're trying to find images we, we didn't have to pay for of taking a horse to water <laughs> and trying to get that with it. It's a famous expression. Um, you can lead a horse to water but not make him drink. So a way I'd like to phrase this is, have you ever wanted a document but you had no budget? Um, and this can come in a lot of ways. Uh, it could be something unexpected that you needed to test for one time. You began your test, but all of your sensors were completely wrong. Um, your sensors were damaged or on the shelf and maybe just out of calibration. And the test required a, ca a full calibration. Um, or you just need more sensors. But... Um, the money people at your office, or if you're in a small consulting gig, you realize you couldn't afford it for one reason or another, and you were unable to perform the test. So keep that at the back of your mind throughout today's presentation. Sure. So yeah, so and as you're kind of keeping those general ideas of why you might need different equipment uh, reset in the back of your head, Likewise, think of things that you may have rented in the past or hired or leased uh, for some sort of temporary use. Uh, common examples being a car. So you're on vacation or even a work trip, whichever it might be. Um, you're not gonna go out and buy a car for that week. Uh, renting a car is the ideal way to get around uh, the city as needed or any sort of tool for home repair. That's kind of a, you know, hey, this is a one-time home repair job you're doing. Uh, once every 10 years, maybe. So why buy that piece of equipment? You then have to find some cheap for maybe never using again. Um, or music or film, uh, that sort of thing. Of course, I guess that's changed maybe a little bit in the days of Netflix and HBO. True. Um, but still similar there. You can kind of cancel that subscription at any point in time, I suppose. People still rent movies just that's like true. through iTunes or something. Yeah. And then kind of a big one that I that all of us have used at some point in time is vacation lodging. Uh, you know, of course, we've got many options of hotels and Airbnb or rental houses these days. But again, when you're going to go on your vacation for one, two weeks, however long, it's unlikely that you're going to 
be able to go <laughs> buy a house. Wish that's something we could all do, but renting that vacation lodging's the way to go. And like Chad mentioned, the reasons that any of these things were rented um, really are the exact same reasons that you would rent test and measurement equipment. Uh, I'm going to go through the list, but again, it's you know one time. It's uh, maybe try before you buy in the case of a car or a power tool. Um, you had no budget or there was no reasonable budget. Your wife said, we're not spending the money on this thing. You may be an engineer and want everything. Um, it doesn't make sense in a lot of cases. So you know, when faced with those budgetary constraints or those unique usages, um, kind of your common options are either you just don't perform the test because you can't get that piece of equipment that you need to do it. Um, you otherwise, don't have the money to, or the funds to purchase it. Um, or you wait and postpone that test, a further delay other stages of, say, product design until you're able to acquire the budget to get the pieces you need. Or you simply just have to kind of make compromises and move along with fewer sensors, uh, that might increase test time, or just in general make obtaining the ideal data maybe a bit more difficult because you're having to compromise on sensor type that may not be the fit best. the test as best as another would. We're going to back up and look at one thing another way too. Um, so traditionally, if we look at marketing 101, um, there were always viewed five P's of marketing, the product, uh, meaning what does your product do? What pain does it solve for a customer? The price and place um, probably don't apply as much to us right here, but the promotion, how do you get to the, uh, into the idea, you know, the minds of the people who are going to use the product? Um, but we can also consider a sixth P that was introduced about 15 years ago, which is called Purple Cow. It's an idea that was floated out there maybe 15 years ago, and it's a very popular book by a guru called Seth Godin. Um, Purple Cow marketing concept, and he states that companies have to build things worth noticing right into their products or services. Um, I highly recommend this book. Uh, it's been translated to a number of languages, and um, you can even watch some short videos online that describe this concept. And I would highly recommend um, Seth's blog if you're in a position to inform how your products or services are viewed by your customers. Um, he has a lot of short, interesting articles that are fascinating to read. Um, and I'll send the link to that blog out later, and I think uh, I'll just show you what the blog looks like. Uh, but in general, if let's say a city and you go out and you start seeing cows, you're like, hey, that cow's awesome. These are great. Wow. And then you see some more cows. You're like, ah, wow, you know, I get it. That cow's pretty too. But after a while, um, you know, if you're driving around here in the winter, you see the cows and you're like, holy cow, cows are really boring. I'm sick of cows, you know, they're, they're not doing it for me much anymore. But what if then all of a sudden you drive along the fields and you see a purple cow? Um, it ends up being remarkable and you want to tell your friends about it. You want them to experience the purple cow um, and kind of it sparks that interest in you. Um, so the whole concept of this purple cow can really transform your business by being remarkable. Um, the definition of remarkable can be, you know, worthy of attention or striking. It's, you know, synonyms are shown there. Um, amazing, astonishing, exceptional. So how does a business become these things? I'm going to pick on PCB here for a little bit. Um, what are some of the ways that PCB customers find PCB uh, remarkable? Um, there's a lot of ways, you know, products and the service, um, platinum product availability, having something on the shelf ready to go is kind of unique in our test and measurement industry. Um, total customer satisfaction is something that PCB stands behind 
on, you know, it, it informs the way we treat customers. Um, we're an integral part of the solutions providing, and it's quite different, I think, to a lot of other test and measurement companies out there. Every time you're dealing with anyone throughout the PCB um, sales chain, is traditionally who engineers may deal with, you'll notice a difference between us and the way you'll get treated from other people. It's in our DNA 50 years ago when PCB founded, it was at the core of how we started the business. Here at the modal shop, um, ways that we're different, uh, we can break it down into segments or markets that we work with and focus on. Uh, let's look at a few examples. Yeah, so here at the modal shop, we have our line of shakers, both, both modal shakers and what we call dual purpose shakers. Um, you know, modal shakers, of course, being uh, primarily built for modal testing with that software suspension system. And then our dual purpose shakers, we can actually do more qualification style testing by mounting a payload to the shakers, uh, utilizing them with a vibration controller. Um, so, you know, we've kind of in this uh, you know, category of it here with uh, smaller, lighter magnets, so we can get more force out of the small, uh, lightweight package. And then even our smart shakers that have the amplifier actually built in, kind of see it there in the in the middle of that picture on the bottom left. So it's a very simple method of using a shaker, whether it be to test small parts on the shaker for modal testing, um, and then using a you know, much stronger carbon fiber based flexure system for just a shaker that essentially you can use it as needed, whenever needed, wherever needed. Then of course, we maintain a lot of our shakers as stock products, in particular our smart shakers, so we can get it out the door quickly as you need. And then we try to simplify the shaker systems by including all the accessories you'll need. So uh, stingers, for example, the chuck and call it to attach the stingers, quick turn handles, spare fuses, all the cabling, essentially, the sim simplest way to get you the product that will be ready to go out of the box. And then finally, we always have total customer satisfaction, just like PCB. As Bruce said, that's built into our DNA uh, to support the product and support you in full. For our calibration group, we offer some of the best exciters in the world. If you're going to test, a, you know, a shock accelerometer or a traditional accelerometer with really um, low transverse sensitivity, um, or if you're going to test different pressure transducers, dynamic pressure transducers, microphones, you can, ex you know, test a hammer. Um, we have a wide feature set throughout our calibration, pro calibration group. Um, we have a deep knowledge base that, and a huge uh, readership in our calibration blog. Um, and again, TCS, which sets us apart from a lot of our competition in the metrology space. And if you look at rental, it's some of the some of the purple cows that set rental apart. I feel are that it's offered from the same family of companies. You know, we're just like PCB and MTS company. We're sister companies. Uh, we have thousands of channels of products offered. Um, we can basically be viewed as a full solutions provider. We'll talk about it later, but how you get some rental equipment is very similar to the way you would buy equipment from PCB um, and TCS. Uh, long story short, as far as purple cows, um, a well thought out test and measurement rental service, it's remarkable because it, it can transform all the reasons you may be hearing no to a yes. Um, a lot of those no are budget related. So it's one of the nicest features and it's honestly really hard sometimes for an engineer to remember this. Um, you get so uh, bogged down by the dogma, really. It's just a way of thinking that um, sometimes it's tough for an engineer to remember to bring up to someone that's in finance or someone that's holding money at your company hey, I found another solution. You can be part of the change in your own company and change that no, we can't do this test, to a yes by making sure everyone in the organization knows that rental is an option. 
Sure. So some of the kind of additional benefits of rental that are something to keep in mind if you're going through planning stages or whatever it may be uh, for a given project are just first and foremost, controlling the project costs. So typically you're not using any sort of capital budget with rental that's coming out of an expense uh, kind of budget. So you can yeah, control how that costs of your project are allotted. Um, likewise with that, improving your cash flow overall as you can rent for a short period of time at lower cost versus purchasing that equipment. The storing and upkeeping the equipment, especially for the test and measurement gear, and I have to admit, I think that we get a little guilty. We're guilty of this too. It's easy for us as a manufacturer of a sensor only to remember the cost of buying that sensor. And I don't want to say we throw it over the wall because you know, if you know PCB or us, we're always there to support you and your product, you know, our products. But it's easy to forget there's a lot of upkeep and maintenance involved in keeping a sensor healthy and on the, on the shelf. Uh, calibration is very important. And it's a cost not often thought of at the beginning when you're buying test and measurement equipment. Yeah, because that so kind of leads well into flexibility here in that calibration. We at the model shop, we can offer unique or specialized calibrations as needed um, for particular accelerometers, for example. So if your customer requires a kind of extended frequency range calibration, that can be an added on service to even a rental sensor. Um, which can be a quicker turnaround than you even sending your sensor that you already own into a calibration lab being calibrated and sent back to you. So it can be a quick way to get even more uh, specialized needs uh, to support a unique test. And then, of course, just the um, maybe the sensors you have in house are too low of a acceleration range for a measurement you need to make. Yeah, you know, what are your what are your options there as far as getting a sensor that fits the test you need and getting that quickly calibrated and ready to go out of the box. Uh, and another, you know, kind of keep leading into that is the what's kind of the latest and greatest um, sensors with TEDs built in that perhaps you don't have a TED sensor yet, uh, lightweight shakers that are easier to use, or you just want to simply try out a shaker before you buy it because you know you're looking to get into more shaker testing, looking to expand that capability. A sound level meter with yeah. uh a data plan built in so it can send you an SMS text alert uh, every time, you know, a threshold is reached or something. Yeah. So all these reasons to essentially help both get the right product and potentially your business into a new category that otherwise would be a bit more challenging if you had only the option to purchase that equipment. And then a brief history about the modal shop and rental. You know, a lot of these get really text heavy. It's not our favorite style of doing presentations at Model Shop, but uh, I don't know. Basically, we were founded 30 years ago. From the very beginning, Model Shop, uh, through our unique history through the University of Cincinnati um, and kind of growing up through the Structural Dynamics Research Lab there, we'd always offered rental at Model Shop since we started. Um, delivery can be really fast. Um, you can reserve items in advance if you have a big test. Uh, everything from rental includes an accredited cal. You can extend it. A lot of times people get a little worried. Hey, uh, I told them this was going to be a 40 day test, but it turns out we're having some trouble. We need to keep it 55 days. No problem. We're not going to be hounding you for the equipment. We understand that tests go long. It's uh, Murphy's Law. And if you're in Europe, um, one of our recent developments is that we're increasing our stock at PCB Europe. Um, and we'll talk about that, I guess, a little bit more at the end. So kind of lead into what are our core rental products? Um, so of course, you know, accelerometers, uh, probably what you think of first and foremost. Um, so uniaxial, triaxial versions, a combination of both ICP or IEPE type sensors, um, DC or, or MEMS type sensors where you can measure that constant acceleration like gravity, um, even high temperature charge mode sensors um, are all in, all in our inventory. Um, and they're covering a wide range of uh, measurement too from as mentioned there, you know, a DC MEMS style sensor all the way to even the newer uh, triaxial shock sensors from PCB now, the 350B40 series. Um, so again, a wide range 
accelerometers there to kind of meet whatever need that might pop up. Um, then, of course, acoustics um, from microphones. Uh, PCBs been working with uh, Urban has increased their uh, range of microphones from low frequency to uh, the new 378A04 low noise microphone, all of which were maintaining our in our rental inventory. Then, of course, the sound level meters from Larson Davis, uh, A31C, uh, as Bruce had mentioned there, and even in the NMS 044 format where you can use that cellular card to get alerts remotely while this is deployed in the field for extended periods. Uh, shakers, uh, our full line of shakers as noted in the previous slide from the smart shaker or the inertial shaker all the way up to our uh, 2110E uh, shaker for dual purpose testing. And then of course, PCB's full lineup of hammers, including uh, even the more unique modal punch uh, that you probably don't see as much, but again, another niche product that probably not many people will own as it is kind of a specialized use, but we have in rental for just that time. Um, and then to go along with the shakers, we do of course have the dynamic force sensors, it's like the impedance side you'd use with a shaker often, or the dynamic force sensors like 2.8 series that you might use with shakers or you know, any other sort of force type measurement you might need for that general purpose sensor. Um, <clears throat> We also have the dynamic strain gauges like the uh, 740 series. If you were on board earlier in the series, we sent out a uh, a nice paper that was a great GVT combined test using the 740 series with accelerometers for aerospace, uh, but really for any, any product that you wanted to do a combined GVT. Well, uh, dynamic pressure is a relatively newer product line that we're getting into. Um, to offer a lot of the popular items from PCB right now. Um, calibration equipment, mainly here it's for portable calibration. Uh, we didn't talk about it much during this presentation, but one of Modal Shop's most product, popular product lines is our portable calibration box that you can actually take in the field and measure in situ. You could set an alert, make sure your sensor and cable and data acquisition work. You could print out a full calibration cert from a, uh, a traceable cert um, you know, remotely, you don't have to be in a lab and uh, specialized equipment like wheel force and uh, rotational equipment. But we'll, we'll go over in a little more detail here. And I just want to fly through some things, some numbers that I pulled. And I, we don't pull these numbers enough. We don't really pay attention much, but I pulled some numbers today. Both current gen precision mic capsules and mic and preamp pairs and then array mics on the right. We have over 700 channels in the rental pool right now. We have, like Chad said, every shaker, every hammer, every shaker model shop makes, every hammer PCB makes. Uh, for Uniaxes, we have uh, over 1,400. And for Triaxes, I was actually shocked to see this number because the last time I did a similar uh, slide for this, it was nowhere near this. But we have over 4,000 channels of um, triaxial accelerometers in inventory right now. So every once in a while when it seems like we're going to pull our hair out calibrating sensors for jobs, now I know why. Makes sense. We have a uh, selection guide online um, and uh, I actually might just flip over real quick and show you what we're talking about. Um, the International Selection Guide, we'll send you a link to it. Um, but let me see if I can pull this up here. Um, the selection guide is online, and what we do is it's kind of, uh, if we go to the price list, a lot of times um, PCB does a really good job of verticalizing their markets and making things so uh, you can find the best aerospace sensor or automotive sensor or industrial sensor. We find that in the rental, um, we do things a little bit differently. And so uh, for short-term needs, you can often make a uh, compromise. So if you go to the accelerometer section, uh, for example, you can see just all of the accelerometers strung together. Uh, we'll give a brief description of the uniaxes, for example, um, when you might use one over another. And then a table for the uniax voltage mode sensors 
just ranked by their amplitude range, that the maximum amplitude range they can measure. Same thing, this holds true through the entire price list, um, describing the products and then maybe a table showing what cables might work with it, what are the special attributes of a sensor, um, does it include a mounting base, um, we often rent, we can rent cables, magnets, piece of bases, mounting studs, um, everything to get your test done uh, because, you know, there's no real need for you to, to do a partial test. You can get everything complete with, uh, with short-term use. Um, triaxes, you can start to see we have a ton of triaxes. Um, and basically, just as a real quick overview, the way we arrange things usually is, like for the accelerometers, it's um, what amplitude is uh, the maximum amplitude the sensor can reach. A lot of the, the things on the side, you know, you can see if it's uh, TEDs or high temp capable or uh, uh, things like that. But I don't want to go through the whole selection guide. There's some helpful tips on it, how you might use a high temp sensor with an inline charge amp to get your output that you'd need. But that same helpful information permeates through the entire selection guide. Um, so it's a really useful document. Um, anyway, so we'll send a link to that at the end of the presentation as well with the follow up in a week. Um, some case studies real quick. I just wanted to fly through some real, um, just from some rentals that we've had in the past and why people rented it and what they rented. Um, you know, we don't really share customer information and actually these are, are things that were either published papers or, uh, you know, public. So even if we had a customer information on here, I'm not sure they'd care too much. <laughs> uh, Norway, um, the customer needed multiple shakers and accelerometers, and it was a one-time test. They had no budget. Um, in Japan, we often ship things. Uh, there's a consultant that they need to sell full systems, and they need ex hammers, accelerometers, microphones. Um, Consulting is funny. Even if your goal is to sell a product or sell an analyzer at the end, each kind of consulting in this instance can be viewed as a one-time test. Uh, Spain recently this year, uh, there's been some aerospace companies that have been uh, dealing with a lot of triaxial accelerometers and cables. Um, in their particular case, they've had really tight capital, but they need to do testing. So something they've been pushing through substantially. Um, Germany, we've had a customer who typically buys equipment, um, but they really needed some specialty use sensors. And it was only for a one-time test as well, even if it was a little bit longer than you might expect um, to preserve capital. And due to the nature of one-time test with weird sensors, the rental was an attractive option. Um, had a customer doing some uh, aerospace work um, in Japan and needed specialty shock accelerometers that they had not used before. Um, and like Chad said, this could be something like the 350B40 series um, or 356B40 series, which is kind of meant for stage separation or pyroshock events. Um, and this was kind of combination. They weren't certain if it was going to be one time and it was tried before they buy if they if they liked it and they had more testing they were all excited to buy the equipment um, another interesting one lately was uh, in france we'd shipped some equipment in the last few weeks uh, via the netherlands actually um, they needed many triaxes i think almost 90 channels worth of triaxes to both perform and prove and sell their full system test uh, very similar to the case we discussed before, but it was one time and try before you buy. So uh, it's a great way to get around the limitations of capital. Um, so really getting started with rental, how does this happen? Um, it's pretty easy. You can actually check the modalshop.com rental section um, and I'll just fly there real quick. Um, if 
a weird. Okay. Um, if you just do modalshop.com, um, you can you go to the front page and you can see a lot about rental. Um, you could view everything at the bottom. And it takes you to a page that's rich in content and you can start to see similar things. Um, and I apologize, there's a lot under the fold. So there's a lot of information um, on here, but you can start really, you know, saying, show me what triaxial sensors you have that are IEPE or voltage mode triax. And you can start to see more information about what we have, um, details about what you get in rental. But um, I, I, I don't think it's any secret to anyone at Modal Shop that our web page needs a little updating. But that said, um, there's a lot of rich content on the web page. Um, so that's one way to get started with the content. Um, the selection guide that we'll send a link out to you as well is another great way. Um, and finally, just contact your local PCB office or distributor. The same way you would talk to anyone at PCB, like an FAE, your, your application engineer that visits you, um, you can talk to Randall about as well. So, and one thing we do want to mention, we didn't really make a separate slide for it, but um, for budget limited things, you know, all the rental gear we have, uh, we don't keep it around forever. So if you ever had a need uh, for something at a budget, you know, on, on a budget, but you really had a permanent need, we always like to find new homes for equipment that have enjoyed a few years out in the field. Uh, we make sure the equipment is calibrated, uh, you know, fully functioning, looks nice, and it gets a, a warranty as well when you buy it. So used is another great example of something you can, if you're capital constrained. Yeah, and then on that okay. note, um, so let's say your test, as Bruce had mentioned before, how we're flexible rental extensions. You might also find that the equipment is working perfectly, exactly how you had envisioned it for a try before you buy, and you'd like to just keep the rental gear that you have versus return it and then budget to buy a whole new set of gear direct from PCB. So that is another option where you can buy out the rental equipment that you currently have on rental. Just keep it on whatever item you're testing and move forward just like that. So essentially convert that rental directly into a purchase in real time and move on seamlessly. Um, kind of another option to acquire equipment in the end for more permanent use. That's basically Probably not the most shocking thing, but hopefully kind of uh, made you rethink if you currently were a rental user, um, I think it shored up what you already know. The feedback we get from customers is, you know, we get raving fans, which is another uh, concept that, you know, PCB keeps at their core. Um, we want everyone to be able to tell, you know, friends in the industry as well as anyone in their own company about what we do. We want people to be excited about what we do, and we continually get that kind of feedback for the rental program as well. Um, but that said, that's about it for today. The future editions of the series, we're getting near the end here. We have uh, outdoor noise measurements next week. Um, they all happen on the next few Tuesdays, the same time. Um, sign up can happen the same way as today, and we hope to make all the digital on demand um, content available afterwards. And we'd love your help. After the follow-up e email is sent out, look at it. Let us know if you have any questions, because that last one in October um, is really an ask me anything. Uh, send us any test and measurement questions you may have. Uh, it, we, we would love not to see every question live that day. We, we did a similar one um, for a different time zone a few few months ago. And we did get a lot of questions. Um, we'd love to leverage the experts we have here at Modal Shop uh, and PCB, if need be, to make sure we have the best answer for you and can provide some exciting content. And that's basically it for today. This was almost on time. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, feel free to contact us if you have any questions, and we'll get that email out with um, some of the, you know, the things we promised you here. 
hope to see you next week.